If you are someone who has that knowledge to share, even if you think it's basic, it's your obligation to put it out there. Now it's your responsibility. Neil Dingra. Neil Dingra. Neil Dingra. You 10 x your business from 300,000 to 4 million net in the past five years and probably well over that now. Yeah. And you, you've not only proved it in your own business, you've helped hundreds of others in your Ford Academy and then you even took uh, an expert who is high at communications like Renee and you thousand X his videos in the first three videos. What was that switch that he had to make that you guys helped him with? So his, his is actually not unlike a lot of us, Andrew. What is true with Renee, myself, even you, even the clients that you and I both work with, it's, it's this thing of, hey, we have a lot of knowledge to share. Some of us have a lot more than others, but everybody's got something to put out there. And how could we share it in an innovative way? And sometimes the topics can be dry. Sometimes it could be a little bit boring, but there's, there's a way you can do it to really grab attention. You know what I mean? Like, could you say things in a certain way that would grab it? Could we chop the video in a certain way? And so some of it's technical, like little simple things like video and audio and framing and all that, but that's, I don't think that's it. I, that's the major piece of why you'd be able to reach way more people. I think it's the messaging. Like, what are we actually teaching people? And so um, teaching people things on social in an innovative way is the key to building like an insane personal brand. And it worked in 2018 when I first started, 2019, 2020, every year. I mean, 2023, halfway through the year, it's still a massive opportunity. So many people don't do it. And, you know, we're always pounding the, the desk saying, man, you got to do this. It's crazy. It's so impactful for your business. You just talked about the financial opportunity that I had in my mortgage and real estate business. But then, yeah, it's just from an impact perspective. Like I think about this, you know, if we don't put out the information, where's the consumer or where's the viewer going to get it? And many times they don't get the information at all or they get the wrong information. So I think of it like this. If you are someone who has that knowledge to share, even if you think it's basic, uh, you it's your obligation to put it out there. Like I think it's it used to be like a nice to have, you know, it's online presence. <laughs> Now it's your responsibility. You know what I mean? Like it's a direct way of saying it. But if you're in any industry where you're in a client service business, real estate, mortgage, and I don't know, you know, if other industries listen to this, financial services, insurance, whatever, and you do not have a at least a presence, a personal brand with some sort of content out there, you're being irresponsible. Like it's you're negligent at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been around for over a decade and attention is kind of the name of the game. I know you know that. <laughs> 100%. And I just seen like the power of attention, like, you know, you get respect, you get more deal flow. It just, what it, what problems do you have in your life, in business? This would solve all of them, you know, 100%. Did you want to build solve. a team, you want to recruit, you want more money, you want more clients, you want whatever. Respect. Like it, it's all solved by building your personal brand and putting out content on the internet. And uh, this assumes that you, that you are good at what you do and you have the knowledge to share. Now, if you don't have that, I do think that you shouldn't fake it. Like you should go build the skills, you know, know what you're saying. Don't just talk for the sake of talking. Um, you gotta have your passion or skills or something that you could put out there. But you know, most people who listen to this type of content or, or, you know, are looking for stuff, they do have something that they should be sharing. They just don't do it for whatever reason. So what was it specifically with the messaging, the communication? Because a lot of people think it's the fancy editing. They think it's cuts. They think they have to do this. Like what, how do you grab attention of a consumer who is scrolling their feed on even the most basic topics, things that they may not even care about, like finance and real estate. Yeah, so I think the the way you do this, and what I found over years of putting out these videos, it's it's like a, it's like a puzzle, right? Um, you got to have the pieces, and one of those pieces is decent quality. Doesn't have to be perfect, but they got to be able to see you. One of those pieces is audio. If you don't have a mic, if you're not audio, if you're not, if the audio is not on, they can't hear you. That's it. Doesn't work. The viewers should not have to work to see you. Meaning, like you shouldn't have to tap this all the way up, and then you still can't hear them. You're not going to give anybody your time if you can't even hear them. You'll just scroll past. So. That is one piece, but like you said, it's not the whole thing. The edit, yep. the video, the audio, that's just one piece. The other piece is like, what are you saying? Is it valuable? And then the, la the other piece is, how did you start the video? What's your hook? Like, how do you get people involved? So a lot of the topics, like you said, could be considered boring uh, because they're niche topics, meaning niche, they're only applicable to people in the certain c period of time in their life or in a certain category. You wanna give niche topics broad appeal. And so Renee might be talking about communication skills. 
but the way he started the video was maybe in, a, in with the topic that you know everybody would want to learn or that people want to save and share or people within that within multiple industries would be more interested in right mm -hmm. and then so with the, with finance and real estate same thing uh i don't know anybody who is not at least somewhat interested in getting their money right you know leveling up unless you're already a uh, freaking 100 millionaire or billionaire then maybe you don't care but for the majority of the audience they want to level up they want to know about real estate investing and they want to know about finance they want to know about money and what are the tips and tricks and hacks that you share i was just doing a call before this where i was doing a training for 40 real estate agents and mortgage lenders and i was just asked them a question what are the things you wish your clients knew about this process what do you wish the customer knew about buying a house or getting a mortgage and then what start making that list you know and so those are the topics those are the hooks oh i wish they knew that they didn't need a large down payment. I wish they knew that it was actually easier than it. Is. I wish they knew that if you don't write your offer this way, it could cause you big problems later on and it costs you all this time and headache. I wish they knew uh, about this loan program that helps you get in. I wish they knew you didn't have to have perfect. Like, so you start writing these things down. Each one of those can be turned into a, uh, a dope video for social media, right? 